life. Greetings from Maitland, Florida. This is Mary Akrig. Just wanted to congratulate you on 25 years. From a small group in Brandon to Colony Hill and Sefner to Bay Life Church on Kingsway Road, you have served the Lord in an amazing way. Hey, Bay Life Church, good morning. My name is Chris Pello, and I had the privilege of serving there for almost eight years. And I want to wish you a happy 25th anniversary. My prayer for you is that God would continue to use each and every one of you to impact this great Brandon community. Hi, Baylife. Brad Hillier here from Tucson, Arizona. Reba and I wanted to express our congratulations to you for 25 awesome years of ministry there in Brandon and awesome years of worship as well. Uh, we want to wish you the very best in the future and for many more years of great ministry there in Florida as you continue as a great church in that area. God bless you all. Hey, Bay Life, it is Joe Windham, and I am out here at Fort Jackson, South Carolina, doing some chaplain training. Robin and I are in Billings, Montana now, been there for eight years, and it is wonderful. It's a little chilly there right now, but just wanted to say happy 25th anniversary. Love you guys so much, and pray you have a wonderful celebration. Take care. God bless you. Hey, Bay Life Church, Steve Frizzell here at Bentry Bible in Dallas, Texas, in 25 years. Congratulations. That is remarkable. Well, what's up, Bay Life Church? This is Chris Groover from Dallas, Texas, and just want to say a, a really big congratulations to you on your 25th anniversary as a church uh, in Brandon, Florida, and just can't wait uh, to see what the Lord does, not only uh, recounting the past 25 years, but also in the 25 years to come. Hi, Bailey. Uh, Greg Dumas here, lead pastor at the Crossing Church. Wanted to say congratulations for 25 years of amazing ministry there at Bay Life Church. Some of you know that we're a legacy of Bay Life. We were there for four and a half years. And so wanted to just say thank you for all that you've done, all that God's going to do in the future as we remain faithful to him and uh, for leaving such a great legacy here and around the world. God bless you and congratulations. Hey, Baylife, Paul Worth here from Relevant Church in Ybor City, and I heard you guys are having a birthday. You guys are 25 years old. You guys can rent a car now. How cool is that? I am just so excited to say that we are a daughter church of Baylife, and we stand on your shoulders because of your faithful ministry. You guys have been faithful for 25 years, and we can't wait to see what God does in the next 25 years. Thanks so much for serving Jesus in a huge way. God bless you guys. Happy birthday. Well, good morning, Bay Life. How we doing? It is great to see you. It was great to see you here early. How'd that feel? Uh, what, a, what a joy to have us all in one place. And uh, to be able to reflect on our legacy, lots of uh, incredible men and women have uh, served here. Lots of incredible men, men and women have been a part of us here. Uh, behind me on the stage, uh, Brad Hillier, Carol Abbott, former worship leaders here at our church. And of course, Darnisha Taylor, our current worship pastor. The rest of our team, I'm so grateful that we all get to be here. I'm so grateful that we get to celebrate something as huge as 25 years of ministry, 25 years of anything is incredible, right? But 25 years of ministering uh, by God's grace and for his glory. What, a, what an incredible thing to be able to get together and just hang out and make a ruckus over. So that's what we're going to do in the first part of this service. You're going to notice we're going to kind of go time travel a little bit. Uh, we're going to kind of go all 25 years as we experience our, uh, our morning together. But I'm so glad you're here. Uh, I'm going to pray for us as we get going this morning, and I'm going to turn it over to our worship team, and we're going to praise our God. Full voices. Everybody with me? Let's pray right now. God, thank you so much for this place, for this church, for your love and grace and mercy through us for 25 years of seeing you work, um, the lives that have been changed, the, the families that have been um, restored, the, uh, the things that you've done 
in our midst, oftentimes in spite of us. <laughs> uh, but through us, God, you have worked and, and we've seen you work and we're so grateful. Today is about saying thank you. Uh, not celebrating us, but celebrating you and what you've done. And so may we lift you up in this room and outside and then the room next door. May we give you the glory that you deserve as your church. And I pray this in your son's name who has made the church possible. All praise be to our God, the Father, the Son, and the Spirit. It's in Jesus' name that I pray these things. And everybody said, Amen. Come on and stand to your feet. Let's give God some praise.
Jesus assembled 40 people to form a new church in Brandon, Florida called Bay Life. From early home gatherings, these families were led by the Holy Spirit to Bay Life's first building on County Hill Drive in Mango. As God worked, word spread, and soon the church was bursting at the seams in need of a new and larger facility to hold them. And Jesus built his church. In 1997, God enabled the young church to purchase its current property on Kingsway Road. And in 1998, Baylife moved into its first brand new facility, grateful for God's provision and eager to serve Him in their next leg of their journey. And Jesus built His church. In a short time, this new facility was being tested as more and more people came to hear the good news. One service became two, and then three, and then four, with families arriving earlier and earlier to line up for a seat in the next gathering. Hundreds came to faith in Christ, were baptized, and grew into leaders and servants needed to disciple the crowds that God was bringing and Jesus built his church. In 2003, work was completed on our current worship center, but a change in leadership brought uncertainty for a time. Even so, God was at work, and his hand was on faithful leaders as they stayed the course and led his church through this period of transition. By His grace, Baylife continued to see hearts and lives changed on a regular basis. And Jesus built His church. God continues to bless those who follow Him here at Baylife. Countless lives have been transformed. Churches have been planted. Orphanages have been started. The community has been shown the love of God, and debts have been retired. Through the years, the faces have changed, but our commitment to and love for Jesus remains the same. And still, Jesus builds his church. And still, Jesus builds this church. Well, hello, hello everybody. everybody here in this room. How's it going? It's echoing over here. How's everybody doing? Hi, everybody in all the other places. 
I have no idea if this is working, so I'll just keep talking like it is. I'm joined on the stage by some incredible people. Say hi to the Zuccarellis, the Devereaux, and the Bolix. Give it up for them. They all have uh, one thing in common, at least. They've, they've pretty much been here since the beginning. Isn't that right? You guys all arrived right around that time? The beginning. That's right. So uh, you guys are the right people to be talking to as I ask these next questions. Uh, uh, I'm going to start out with this one. As uh, people who've been around here for most of those 25 years, if not all of them, uh, fellas, what, what are some of your fondest memories uh, of, of our early years together as a church? Don, why don't you start us off? Um, my fondest memory is... Uh, Patty and I uh, came to know the Lord later in life, um, and we were saved at uh, a church called Calvary, which is the mother church of Bay Life. And back in, uh, so Bay Life starts, uh, we go off as new Christians because it's a brand new church. Um, and my favorite, my fondest memory is that we, our family, uh, was the first to become uh, baptized at uh, Bay Life Church. And 25 years later, um, we're still here, and our daughters, son-in-law, and granddaughter call this home. Well, yay God for that. Pretty cool. Uh, Rich, I'm going to let you go next. What's your fondest memory of those early years? Well, from the beginning, we've been involved in lots of different ministries, but I remember uh, one of the first memories is uh, being life group leaders, getting a call in the middle of the night after already going to bed from a... Um, a lady in our life group, she said her husband had been in a terrible accident, had been injected from the vehicle, and he's in critical condition, and she wanted somebody to spend time with her. So I naturally just got up and got dressed and ran to the hospital. Well, I found out later she was also on the phone with the pastor at the time, and I wanted somebody. She didn't know if I was going to be there or not, and when I got there, she said to the pastor, never mind, Rich is here. Well, <laughs> Most, most pastors don't get that, that kind of response, but it was just that we were the life group leaders. We were involved in their life. We were, we were their pastors, and it uh, just speaks to the uh, importance of, of life group leaders and how um, the, the backbone of the church, we've, we've been that way ever since the beginning. Yeah, yeah. isn't that great? Uh, yeah, thanks, Rich. Uh, certainly, we're just grateful for all the opportunities that God gives so many to shepherd, and uh, I thank you for being there that night. Mike, you get to go next. What's your fondest memory? been watching Bay Life grow and, and building relationships. Uh, back in October, Mark did a series on neighbors. And uh, my neighbor, uh, originally uh, was, was Terry Rogers, uh, the late Terry Rogers, and he invited, invited me to go to Calvary. And uh, there I got saved and changed, and then I turned around and invited Mr. Zuccarelli here. And now he's your elder. And then we moved to several different neighborhoods uh, throughout the years, uh, been able to invite many, many people, do a lot of life groups, and uh, as a result, uh, we had the opportunity to watch Bay Life grow. Yeah, and that's how it grows, right? One invite at a time. Thank God for that. Well, uh, ladies, I'm going to let you tackle this question. Over the last 25 years, I, I guess a few things have changed. What are, what are some of the biggest changes that you've seen? Pat, you want to start us off on that one? I think that we've really grown in our missions, in our service that we have at Bay Life here from the beginning. I'm pleased to hear that. We could always be doing more. Thanks for that. Uh, Marsha, how about you? What are the things that you see that changed? We are out of debt. <laughs> and Debbie, you get to finish this off here. What, what are the biggest changes that you've seen over the time? Well, when we started the children's ministry way back when, our first weekend, we had a grand total of 33 kids. Wow. And as you can see, God has been so faithful to constantly um, help our children's ministry grow. We now are so proud to have the Lamps Lampkins Preschool Program. We have Awana for the kids. We have um, uh, teen mission trips, uh, youth programs, young career um, adult um, groups that get together once a week. So God has provided many opportunities to keep serving our children and families. And one of the best things, blessings that we've seen is that you walk around church and you see so many of these kids that have grown up and have come back here to yeah. our church to serve along with their families. Yeah. Praise God for that. You guys are doing really well. You feeling good? You're doing really well. Uh, one more question then. Uh, if you could name one thing, you get to name one thing uh, that you're most grateful for that God has taught you while you've been here at Bay Life, what, what would that be? And Don, we're going to start with you. The biggest thing for me is that 
God has taught me that this life isn't about me, this prideful man. It's about my Lord and Savior. I keep my focus on him. That's good. Mike, you're next. Don stole my thunder. <laughs> he, he and I are too much alike, but it is, it's not about me. It's, uh, it's, it's obeying God and seeking out God every day for direction, and it's praying, and uh, just allow God to uh, open up doors every day for you. Good. Rich? Well, I see is uh, that just God builds his church. You now, leadership has changed. Uh, people have changed. We've, we've, we've grown tremendously. Uh, but ministry keeps going, you know, because God is, is in it. And God's the one that builds the church. All right. Marsha? Um, God has shown me the importance of consistency. And from the beginning, I was involved in children's ministry and specifically um, in the nursery and that God really impressed on me that we needed consistent workers, and I really prayed for that, and God provided that um, to have consistent weekly workers, and just um, just by faith that God provided that. Yeah. Um, so grateful for the many who serve. Debbie, go ahead. Okay, well, when we started, I knew we had big plans for Bay Life, but God has shown us that his plans are so much bigger and better than we can ever imagine. And uh, all he asks us to do is to just trust and obey him, and he will provide a way. And Pat gets the last word. For me, um, I look back at the beginning, and we were new Christians then. And I feel like God has really shown me that I myself have put too much into the leaders, my pastor, and instead of looking to God, but I didn't, I didn't know until I was growing in my walk and then I just realized when we went through some of our struggles and trials and watching church hopping that I needed to be committed and that my focus was in the wrong place and I put my eyes on Jesus and said he's first and then you have taught us and just by watching you in the 15 years that you've been here that you ask God to move you aside and to work through you and speak through you, and that speaks volumes to me. Thank you. Can we thank these guys for sharing their stories? We're going to continue worshiping this morning. God bless you guys. Wherever you are in the facility or in the tent, we invite you to worship with us at the Student Center. Come on and stand to your feet. Let's give God some praise this morning.
by giving of our tithes and offerings? Yeah. Listen, uh, I just want to take a second before we do that, and as the ushers come forward, just to say thank you. Uh, thank you for giving generously over the years. Uh, those that started this church gave in anticipation of what God would be doing, right? And we who have come later get the benefit from their generosity, and now we have the opportunity to give to the Lord and see what he's going to do with it into the future. So let me pray for this, this tithes and these offerings and we'll continue to celebrate. Father God, I thank you so much for this morning. I thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness. I thank you that we get to celebrate uh, 25 years of this church walking with you. Uh, you directing our path. You receiving the glory. Uh, you making your name well known. Lord, we love you. Uh, our lives have been changed because of you. And uh, Lord, we want to give back to you now just a portion of what you've given to us. God, we ask that you would use these gifts for your glory's sake, that your name would continue to be known, that you would continue to use this church to spread your love around Brandon and around the world. God, we love you. It is in your precious and holy name, Jesus, we pray these things. Amen. Bay Life Church has taught me how important life groups are. Our family has learned to grow in our faith, how to serve other people in the church, and just to get deeper in the word. One of the most significant things is he showed me his heart for the world and his love for the least of these. I praise God for all that he has done for my family. They've had such a good opportunity to serve him and to grow in their faith. I praise God for teaching me the value of teamwork and the uh, beauty of serving with volunteers. The one thing I learned at Bay Life Church in my six years of ministry there, from being the student pastor and college pastor, and even teaching on the main stage at Bay Life, was dream big. From the moment Bay Life started, dreaming big was part of the fabric of what you guys have done. We should do this every week. This is kind of fun. <laughs> Maybe not. Maybe not. <laughs> I think our tech teams would quit. Uh, uh, but I'm so grateful. Can we all say thank you to everybody who's serving us this morning and making these minutes, this special service possible? They're doing a great job. Three questions this morning, 20 minutes. We'll see how it goes. Three questions. The first one uh, I just posed to these uh, Current and former staff members, it, it might be a, a, a simple, tough question. Simple because it's just asking for one thing. Just give me one thing. But tough because I trust, uh, as I know uh, probably most of you can uh, you know, agree, uh, there's been lots of things that God has taught me in my time here to narrow it down to one. That's, that's kind of tough. But uh, I appreciate our current and former staff trying to do that for us. Uh, but I, I'm curious about you guys. I was so curious, I actually printed up a card for you guys to answer the question on. Did you notice that as you walked in and sat down this morning? Uh, today we're going to talk about the one thing, and, uh, and we're going to start off with this question. Uh, what's the one thing that God has taught you? Uh, using one word, as you can see on the back of this card, using one word, I'd love for you guys to share the single most impactful thing that God has shown you while at Bay Life. We put one word down here because we're hoping to put together a memento for our 25th anniversary that'll kind of live around on our campus for a long time. And uh, your one words are going to be a part of that memento. So 
Uh, maybe it's uh, a word like for me, trust. God has taught me to trust in ways that I never thought I would need to as a senior pastor, uh, as, 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 as a leader in a church. Uh, and, and that's one of the things that as, as I think about what God has taught me, he's taught me trust. Maybe for you it's been peace or redemption or re rescue or freedom or any other things that he has taught you. If you want to write that down right now because you already know, that's great. But you can take the rest of the time that I'm talking, just pray and think about it. Uh, but I would love for everybody to finish this card out and be able to turn it in uh, at one of the uh, doors as we're leaving this morning or uh, leaving for lunch. Like, we're going to have lunch today. How about that? Church, full service, right? So that's the first question. What's the one thing that God has shown you? I'm going to get to the second question in a second, but let me tell you kind of how I, I generated the talk for this morning. I knew it was going to be shorter, so I, I only wanted to focus on one particular thing as, as we celebrated our 25 years together. And what God gave me as I prayed and prepared was talk about the church. Talk about the, and that's what we're celebrating. We're celebrating 25 years as a church, 25 years as a church that's planted other churches, 25 years as a church that has another church existing on our campus right now at, uh, with the chapel that's going to be in Mango. Uh, so let's talk about the church. And that's when it occurred to me that this same question that I was asking you, this question about what's the one thing that you've learned from being a part of this church, it could be asked of the church in general. Well, what's the one thing that makes the church the church? Well, what's the one thing that we can attribute the success uh, and, and the, uh, the persistence, the, 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 the existence of our church? What, what's the one thing that we could point to uh, that's been significant to us for our 25 years. And then I thought, well, why, why stop with us? Why stop with 25 years? Let's go back all 2,000 of this thing, right? Because the church has been in existence since the first century. And that's an even bigger question, right? Like, like how did a bunch of nobodies and misfits and fishermen, how did they become what we as a, a global church are today? They had no business making it out of the first century, no business making it out of Jerusalem. How is it possible that you and I sit here today? The answer is pretty simple and clear. We could stop off on the way to the answer with lots of great things. There's been great leaders. There's been um, uh, great miracles and great stories throughout the history of not just our church, but all churches. But here's the simple answer. Our one thing in our 25 years, the one thing in the universal church's 2,000 years has never been anything less than the presence of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The church exists. The church exists by the power in the presence and through the person of our Savior, Jesus Christ, period. That's it. You wanna know how we're sitting here? Jesus. You know why we're singing the songs? Jesus. You know why you and I have a place forever secured in eternity? Jesus. Yeah, if a pastor asks you a question, <laughs> say Jesus. But it just so happens in this situation and in most of the church's situations, the answer is always Jesus. Always has been, always will be. Without him, there's no creation, John chapter 1. Without him, there's no recreation. John 3, 16. And without him, there is no church. In fact, the church was Jesus' idea. It was first spoken of in our Bibles in Matthew chapter 16 when Jesus and this guy Pete were having a conversation. Jesus says, hey, Pete, who do you say that I am? And Pete said, well, you're the Christ. You're the Messiah. You're, you're the Son of God. And Jesus said this to, to Peter in Matthew chapter 16, verse 18. He says, I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Usually when we study this verse, we're trying to figure out what Jesus meant when he said, on this rock. Lots of debate on that. Some people think it was Peter, and our Catholic friends use that as the reason for the papacy. Some people think it was the, the, the claim that Peter made, that Jesus is the Christ, and I would side with that one. Uh, but I think the most significant statement in Jesus' statement, or the portion that is the popper for me, Jesus said, I will build my church. And the gates of hell, they got nothing on me. The efforts of my adversary, they will not prevail. 
This church that is my idea will be built by me and for me, and I will work through it until I'm done with it, and I take it home. And that's just how it's going to be, Pete. It goes for all churches in all eras in all places. Happening around our community right now, there's a whole bunch of other buildings like this that are housing peoples like us. They may be different from us in certain methods or modes, but if we share a faith in this Jesus, we share a family. Jesus is building those churches. For 25 years, he's built this church. He will go on to build the chapel and other chapels and other churches because it's Jesus who builds the church. I'm grateful to serve a Savior who's immutable. He doesn't change. For the Bible tells me so. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 8 says that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. Think about that for a second. In just our 25 years uh, here at God's Church called Bay Life, we've gone through location changes, building changes. We're building another one right over here. Uh, we've had program changes galore, leadership changes, many of them. Uh, grace, great, I'm so grateful that Brad and Carol and everybody else got to join us this morning, the many who are serving, or used to serve. Hi, Mary, and everybody else who's over there. Uh, but we've, we've gone through a lot of people. Leadership changes, people changes. Some of you are here for the third time. You keep going and coming, going and coming, going and coming. <laughs> Stay. <laughs> Our styles have changed. Not just musically, we went, went kind of through the, the playlist this morning. But we don't dress the same, some of you still do. <laughs> Our governments have changed, certainly the world around us has changed. And uh, judging from the pictures that were posted online this week on Instagram and Facebook, all of us have changed. <laughs> but there's one thing that remains constant in our midst as a church. There's one thing that's remained constant in the midst of every church. It's the power and the presence and the person of our Savior, Jesus Christ. He's our constant, our source, our Savior, our guide, our protector, and he is the point of this whole deal. So as we start this next 25 years, and I pray more, pray more than that, I might not be around for them all, but I pray that this thing goes until Jesus comes back. And as we start and embark May we remember that without Jesus, we are nothing and we can accomplish nothing. May we seek him and his kingdom first always. May we be mindful of his hopes for this church and every church. And may we, as uh, Paul outlines for us, uh, live up to the things that he has for us in his church. Just the time I have left, I'm just going to talk about two more verses in 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 14 and 15. Paul writes this. He says, I hope to come to you soon. He's been writing Timothy for three chapters now, and he, he pauses in the midst of his um, speaking, his writing, to just say, hey, Tim, I hope we get to hang out pretty soon. But here's the deal. I'm writing these things, so if, if I can't, if I'm delayed, verse 15, I want you to know how people ought to behave in the household of God, which is the church of the living God, a pillar and a buttress of the truth. So Paul says, here's the reason I'm writing you this letter, Tim. I, I want everybody in the church to know how the church is supposed to work. I want people to know how to behave. But then as Paul is wont to do, as the Holy Spirit inspires him to write what he writes, he goes off on these incredible picture words of what the church is. And these are the three things that mark a church that are built in Jesus. I'm going to talk to you about them quick. Everybody listen fast. The first thing that he says here in verse 15 is that Jesus makes us his family. See where he says that? He says, if I delay, verse 15, uh, I, I, I write this so that you may know how one ought to behave in the household of God. That's the Greek words oikos and theos. Oikos is the word for house. I had a kid on my basketball team at Moody Bible Institute. He was so big, so broad, we called him oikos. He was as big as a house. That's not what uh, uh, Paul is referring to here in the rest of the context of 1 Timothy. He's talking about the household, the family of God. What an, what an incredible thing that when you and I put our faith in Jesus Christ, we don't just get heaven, we don't just, just get Jesus, we get each other. We get the family of God. We get to belong like we talk about around here. 
Though otherwise unrelated and unconnected, Jesus has made it possible for you and I to belong to each other. He's adopted us. Uh, He has uh, grafted us. He has uh, raised us to life as we've been studying in Ephesians this year to be joint heirs with him. We used to go around in my church, uh, in in the Angry Baptist Church I grew up in, and and we'd shake hands halfway through the service. Anybody do this? You you would basically shake hands, kind of like we do sometimes. Some of you, Darnish likes the hug thing, some of you don't. But... uh, but we'd shake hands and we'd sing this song and it went like this. I'm so glad. I'm, and we'd go around and shake people's hands. I'm a part of the family of God. If you know it, sing it. I've been washed in the fountain, cleansed by his blood. I'm back in the lights now. Join heirs with Jesus as we travel this sod. For I'm part of the family, family of God. You've got to be a certain age, I guess. All right. All uh, right. I never knew what it meant. Sang it every week. I used to think joint heirs was one word. (laughs) It's joint heirs. But now I get it. I get it. Jesus created the church so that the church could have each other. And what a blessing that is. Secondly, Jesus makes us his home. In verse 15, it says this. Uh, If I delay, I'm writing this so that you may know how you you ought to behave in the household of God, which is the church, ecclesia there, of the living God. Uh, In the New Testament, 15 different times, writers use this word about God. He's the living God. It's it's in juxtaposition to all the other gods that people worship. They're dead gods, false gods, fake gods. But the New Testament writers were inspired by the Holy Spirit to write, hey, make sure they know they're the church of the living God. That God has chosen to put himself into his church. No more temples. No more going to Jerusalem to give sacrifices. Where's the temple now? We're the temples of the Holy Spirit. And here's the great thing about us gathering on a Sunday or a Saturday or whenever we get together We get to bring the temples together. We get to bring the God in us together. The God in me meets the God in you. We get to rub off on each other and encourage each other and admonish each other. That's how he designed it. He placed himself in us so that we could be used by him in each other's lives. That's why it's so important that we not forsake the gathering together. It says as much in Hebrews chapter 10. It says, let us continue to to consider how to stir up one another to love and good works, not neglecting the meeting together of each other, as is the habit of some, more so in our culture. There's better deals on Sunday. Beach is open. I'll just catch it online. And I'm not bagging people around watching online. Hi, it's great to see you. (laughs) But I am saying God designed the family to work together, to be together, to meet together, to encourage one another all the more as we see the day drawing near. The last thing that he teaches us here is that Jesus sends us out with his truth. Verse 15, one more time. If I delay, Paul says, if I can't get there, I would wrote this so that you can know how to behave in the household of God, which is the church of the living God. And he calls the church a pillar and a buttress of the truth. He goes architectural on us. Back in those days, you would have a a pillar that held up your roof. It was usually, uh, well, there was a big temple in Ephesus. Everybody in this church that Tim was uh, pastoring would would be like, oh, the pillars, the pillars at the Temple of Diana. Those are the 18-meter ones. Those are big. And they hold up the roof. And they can be seen on the hill. They can be seen from miles away. He says, when it comes to my truth, uh, I want you to elevate my truth. But I don't want you just to elevate my truth. I want you to hold firm to my truth. A, A buttress was a foundation piece, it was a bulwark. And it basically would, would be used to hold up and support the building from, from the ground. So here's what we got in this one seemingly, you know, just added on sentence that Paul writes to Tim about, hey, I wish I could come and see you. We, we got this incredible, incredible picture of the purpose of the church. The church holds on to the truth of Jesus Christ no matter what the culture says. The church holds on to the truth of Jesus Christ no matter what cost it brings to them. The church 
holds on to and is rooted in the foundation of the truth of the gospel. Because it's that truth that will set us free. But it doesn't stop there. It doesn't it doesn't say that we should just huddle up and, and buttress up, right? Let's everybody come in here and let's not be concerned with the people who don't know the truth. Let's just make sure we defend it. No. Let's read our Bibles, church. From the get-go, Jesus was like, hey, you're going to be my lights. You're going to be my salt. He was in his early teachings in Matthew chapter 5 when he says, you are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden. I want you to hold my truth high. I want the world to see my church and to know that I am their Savior, their God. I want them to hear the truth through me. I was so blessed to listen to Mike talk about how he just went through his neighborhood. And he asked this guy, and then they moved, and they asked this guy, and then they moved, and they asked this guy. And it was just so natural for him to be a pillar. And it should never be unnatural for us to hold up the truth of our Savior Jesus Christ. I feel like our best days are ahead of us as a church. This isn't on my notes. This is just my heart. I feel like the best days for us as a people are ahead of us. I think they're going to be harder days as our culture continues to go in the direction it does, but our best days are ahead of us because I believe that we are a people who believe that Jesus is the center of it all, who will hold to his truth, and who will proclaim his glory to a world that desperately needs him. And I pray that every Sunday is like this Sunday in this room. That more people come to know him and worship him with hearts full like ours. <laughs> but how will that help them? Or how will that happen? We have to tell them. It tells us in Romans chapter 10. How then will they call on him? in whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in him whom they have not heard? And how are they to hear without someone preaching? And how are they to preach unless we are sent? I'm sending you as it is written, Paul says. How beautiful are the feet of those who preach the good news. Anybody get to see the photos that were online this weekend? As we kind of ramped up to this uh, weekend. Uh, there's a picture of Eleanor and I. I don't know if it's going to show up on the screen. I hope it does. Uh, but uh, this picture. Uh, yeah, there we are. Yeah, there we are. Yeah, wow. Thanks for the t-shirt. That's my color. Anyway, uh, someone threw me that. that. That's the night that I, we sat on this stage and we just answered questions. You guys peppered us for a couple hours. And, uh, and we just, we are all praying. We're just, hey, we're supposed to hang out. We're supposed to date. We're supposed to get married. We're supposed to be here, right? And, uh, and, and God said yes. And that was almost 15 years ago. And I am so grateful that God led us to be a church together. And then for the past 15 years, it's been our privilege to serve in a church where Jesus has made us family. To serve in a church where we have been encouraged uh, by those who are here and, and who are indwelled by the living God. Where, where, where we have sought together to hold firm to the truth while holding up the truth of our Savior, Jesus Christ. I, I said three questions at the beginning of this talk. I've asked two. The first one was, what's your one thing? And you're going to fill those cards out, right, and turn them in for us, right? The second one, what, what's the church's one thing? And I hope I've made that clear. It's Jesus. Jesus is the church's one thing. <laughs> but my last question is this. What's Jesus's one thing? What, what's our Savior's one thing? I'll tell you what it is changed lives. He doesn't come and die otherwise. He's hoping for redemption and rescue. As we close our service, it's what I want us to leave these first 25 years reflecting on, the fact that God has used us as a church to change lives. He's changed lives through our ministry. We're over 1,400 souls converted to the faith of Jesus Christ to this day. That's just the ones we know about. I pray there's more. We are just shy of 2,000 people who have been baptized here at our church in those 25 years. It's incredible. 
it's incredible, but here's the deal. I know Jesus still has more. There's still more. There's more for us as we grow in our faith in him. There's more for those who are not here yet who need faith in him. He wants to use us for more. I've seen him do it. I'm grateful for the 25 years that he's done what he's done. But I trust that God is able and willing and desiring to do it again and again and again through us, to bring lives to change. So there's no other way to finish this than for me to go dunk some people. We're going to go baptize some folks. You're going to sing. I'm going to baptize. And we're going to celebrate 25 years together as a church, 25 years together in the service of our Savior, 25 years together in watching him change lives. Stand with me as we pray. Lord, I thank you for this opportunity to make much of you. It is you and your son, Jesus, who has given us this church. It's for you that we sing, and it's for you that we live and serve. And so, God, would you take us from these first 25 years? Thank you so much for all that you accomplished in your name through us. Lead us into what's next. Help this assembly to be dedicated to its living God. May we have Jesus at the center of it all. May we thank you for all that you've given us. It's more than we could ever ask. But may we seek more from you. May we see you do your work through us again and again and again. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.
Oh
No!